Good evening, everyone. Glad you found us online. If you would just do us a favor and hit that like button so we know that you're out there watching, or if you're on the YouTube channel, hit that little heart, guys, so we know uh, that you are there watching us. And also, it kind of increases our viewing. So, tonight, for our Advent, Micah's Journey, we say, glory to God in the lowest. Well, that's not really how that song goes at all, but we'll unpack exactly what we mean by that this evening in Micah's message to us tonight. make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read responsibly sections of Micah chapter 4. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as the highest of the mountains. Then many nations will say, Come, let us go up the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. God's fierce judgment gives way to final grace. We continue with our time of confession and forgiveness. Lord God, merciful Father, 
pour out your Holy Spirit and deliver us from all evil. Open our eyes so we see our sin and selfishness. Inspire our repentance so we return to you. Amen. Returning to our gracious Lord, let us confess our sins. Merciful Father, we confess that we do not live according to your word, and instead we follow gossip and slander, pride and pretense. We have become smug and self-righteous. Bring us out of our sin and clothe us with the garments of salvation, one for us through Jesus Christ. Amen. Our God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Out of that love, he sent Jesus to shed his blood for us. By faith, we stand forgiven, restored, and empowered to live new lives. Therefore, we proclaim to each other, Christ redeems you and restores you. Christ loves you and forgives you. God's fierce judgment gives way to final grace. Continue with the prayer of the day. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson is from Micah chapter 6. Hear what the Lord says. Arise. Plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the indictment of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has an indictment against his people, and he will contend with Israel. O my people, what have I done to you? How have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O my people, remember what Balak, king of Moab, devised, and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord, and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with a thousand thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson is from Philippians chapter 2. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. 
Therefore God has exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. At this time, we'll make confession of our Christian faith to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As we continue with our Advent journey through Micah, our theme today is Glory to God in the Lowest. Although that's not what the angels sang, but that's what Micah says. What should our response be to that? Come, adore on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Our series takes us today to Bethlehem. This is a picture of the oldest standing church in the world. It's called the Church of the Nativity, and it's located in the little town of Bethlehem. The church was built in the 4th century AD over the site where Jesus was born. Unlike most cathedrals that have been built recently or since that time, it does not have a big, gigantic door. For example, St. Peter's Basilica in Rome has a door that's over 25 feet tall. To enter the Church of the Nativity, though, you have to walk through this door. It's called the Door of Humility. The door is four feet tall and two feet wide. In iniquity, the low door kept people from riding their horses and carriages into the church. In Luke chapter 2, verse 14, the angel sang, Glory to God in the highest, but to get to Jesus, you have to go on bended knees. Bended knees means you have to get down, get down low. The church of the nativity announces, Glory to God in the lowest. Truth of the day. To get to Jesus, you have to bow down and get low. That's what Micah wants us to learn today. The glory of God, the presence of God in Jesus, the gospel in all of its sweetness and joy is for the weak, not for the strong. It's for the sinners, not for the righteous. The gospel is for the humble, not the haughty. Jesus doesn't come for the highest and the holiest, Jesus comes for the lowest and the least. Glory to God in the lowest. That's not what people were saying in Micah's day, though. In Micah 6, verses 6 to 7, we hear this from the prophet. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings? With calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Ten thousand was the largest number in Hebrew. Micah mocks the mighty. The people of Micah saying, Glory to God in the highest, and they said, We're the highest, we are the holiest. We're the brightest and we are the best. This sort of resonates with us a little bit, right? There's a part of us, all of us, that thinks, I'm the brightest. I'm the best. After all, I'm an American. I am not an American. I can do anything. Glory to God in the highest. But Micah says, glory to God in the lowest. Look again at Micah, verse 6, 8. He has told you what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Let's unpack these five words. Walk humbly with your God. Walk, not sit. Walk, not stand. Walk, Move and make progress with Jesus. Imagine you are, and a close friend are, are walking down a country road, and you laugh and you listen and, and you share your heart. Your, your attention is focused on your friend to the exclusion of everything else that is going on around you. You see, you are in harmony. Both of you are enjoying this close kinship. Your hearts are knit together as one. Walk, not sit. Walk, not stand. Micah tells us to walk. 
move and make progress with Jesus. Micah encourages walking with the Lord. So how are we measuring up with that, with our walk with Jesus? We often like to to run. We're busy with this and and that and the other thing, and, and oftentimes our busyness causes us to not spend time with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, whether it's in worship or or in prayer or in family devotions with one another. Oftentimes, we don't like to walk with Jesus. We rather are just running from, from here to there. And let's be honest, we're seldom humble, offering our opinions as if they are gospel truth. And yet, that's not what our Lord calls us to do. He calls us to to go forward in humbleness, in meekness, in gentleness. Sure, we might have to speak the word of truth, but the gospel reminds us that we're supposed to speak that word in love. We're not always interested in God's ways. We like our own ways. Unfortunately, we sometimes see our walking with Jesus as more of an inconvenience rather than a blessing. Advent means to prepare the way. Prepare the way for the Lord. Like John the Baptist cried out in the wilderness, he calls us once again to to prepare the way, to be walking with Jesus, to be spending time with our Lord. Because after all, there isn't anything that's more important than that. Spending time with Jesus. Because one day we will be with him forever. In July of 1994, scientists watch a huge meteor crash into Jupiter. They were amazed to see the huge cloud of dust that rose in Jupiter's atmosphere. Scientists soon theorized about the planet-wide effects of the massive collision. It took a while, but eventually someone asked the most obvious question. What if that had been us? Hey. If the heavens converged with earth, that would change everything. It would really change everything. But brace yourself, folks, because it actually did happen. Heaven converged with the earth. Your God, my God, our God descended upon our planet. Ground zero of this eternity of changing events. And where was it? Well, Micah prophesies of it. It happened in Bethlehem, an animal feeding trough in the little town of Bethlehem. But this changes everything. Well, how so? Well, because it's glory to God in the lowest. But also, glory to God in the lowest means God's presence. God's glory is in the lowest places. Here is your God in the lowest. God became a human. God humbled himself. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 reminds us that he who was rich for our sake became poor. And Philippians 2 verse 7 reminds us he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. Look how low he goes. Indeed, this is glory to God in the lowest. Our God, our Savior Jesus, takes on the form, the lowest form. Our form, humble, meek, and mild. The Bible's central message isn't our search for Christ, but rather Jesus searching for us. Listen to Luther's Christmas sermon of 1527. He writes, Reason and will would ascend and seek above, But if you would have joy, bend yourself down to this place where you find that child given for you who is your creator lying in a manger. I know of no God but this one in the manger and on the cross. The Bible's central message is Christ searching for us. Christ comes down into our mess, into our our muck, into our manure. Christ comes down to save us from our sin because we are helpless to save ourselves. 
Christ doesn't stand aloft and disconnected. Christ doesn't come for the highest and the holiest, but God comes for the lowest and for the least. Christ comes for the humble people. He comes for people who are willing to admit that they are plain old humans, poor, miserable sinners. No wonder Micah writes, walk humbly with your God. Glory to God in the lowest. And the absolute lowest place wouldn't be a manger. No, the absolute lowest place would be a cross. Cicero, a Roman politician who died in 43 BC, famously wrote that the cross is the most cruel and hideous of all tortures. This is our God, the God of the manger, the God of the cross. With bloody hands stretched out, here is the God who comes down to our gutter. He dies for us to to rescue us from ourselves, from this sinful flesh that, that still clings so closely to us. So we walk with him, because that's what Advent is all about. Remember, come to Bethlehem and see him whose birth the angel sings. Come adore on bended knee, bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Glory to God in the lowest, to the lowest for you and for me. Amen. And may this peace, which surpasses our human understanding, guard your hearts and keep your minds in Christ forever. Amen. We continue with our worship by the giving of our tithes and offerings, which you are seeing put before you the different options that you have for giving. And we certainly appreciate your continued giving, even though you haven't been able to make it here in person. A great reminder prayer found in our Lutheran service book, hymn number 781, puts this in perspective. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Indeed, we are thankful for the blessings our Heavenly Father has given to us, and we pray that these gifts and offerings will continue his kingdom work among us.
continue with our prayers, we see our mighty God arriving in the most unlikely places, a child in a stable, a man up on a cross, the risen one bursting forth from an empty tomb. May God hear our prayers because of Christ Jesus. Creator God, stretch out your hand in healing and protection over all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Just God, grant your spirit to the nations and send your light to the dark places of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Suffering God, inspire all people by Christ's cross and bring forth resurrection and life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Saving God, sustain all who suffer and release those imprisoned by pain or disease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renewing God, take us and empower us to live according to your will, making us shine with the love of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Arriving God, Keep us steadfastly trusting your word, just as you kept your powerful prophet Micah. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us ears to hear, O God, and eyes to watch, that we may know your presence in our midst during this holy season of joy as we anticipate the arrival of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And receive the benediction of our Lord. No God is like our God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, pardoning iniquity and passing over transgression. He does not stay angry forever. Because he delights in steadfast love, he casts our sin into the depths of the sea. God's fierce judgment gives way to final grace.
Yeah. Mm-hmm.